Hello, colleagues. Uh, first of all, I want to thank all of you uh, to uh, attending this conference. Uh, and uh, today, I'm going to share with you uh, what is what kind of services and what kind of uh, features uh, Google Cloud Platform has to provide uh, to support cloud native applications. My name is Andrei Bereznikov, uh, so Andrei, uh, and uh, I am a cloud engineer in Google Cloud. Uh, my main, uh, main task is to work with uh, customers in our region, so in C Central Eastern Europe region and Baltics, uh, and help uh, our customers, new as well as existing customers, uh, to implement the infrastructure, implement the uh, architecture uh, with the help of uh, Google Cloud Platform products. So uh, let's uh, first of all uh, smoke. Uh, Housekeeping, uh, let's do. Uh, so if you have any question, uh, you can always reach out to me in Slack chat. It's Andrei Bereznikov uh, of DevOps, uh, DevOps conference. Uh, and also uh, you can reach out to uh, Google Cloud channel. I will be there as well. So if we are talking about Google Cloud, and if we are talking about uh, cloud native applications, so of course uh, we are talking about Kubernetes. So all my today's uh, presentation will be around Kubernetes and around services, uh, Kubernetes services, uh, and of course with the angle of view from uh, Google Cloud Platform. So I will share with you some uh, product updates or some small products which uh, appears for the last time and which of that uh, you may be missed. Uh, first, and I think most important, at least from my perspective, uh, it's announce uh, which happens uh, this April, I think, uh, it's GKE Autopilot. So GKE Autopilot is a new way how you can manage your GKE deployments and uh, G, uh, GKE clusters inside of uh, Google Cloud Platform. Uh, let me firstly share some background uh, which stays behind uh, the launch of this product. Initially and uh, still uh, many implementations is, can be done due, uh, with help of just vanilla or DIY Kubernetes deployments. So you will do everything uh, which need to deploy a Kubernetes service by it yourself. Uh, by yourself. So basically monitoring, after uh, provisioning, scaling, uh, logging, uh, deploying application, networking, security, etc. Et so it's a like a default approach uh, mostly for on-premise environments uh, because to be honest i didn't meet uh, a lot of such deployments uh, in gcp for last couple of years initially when i just joined uh, google there were, i had customers which deployed uh, kubernetes in such way now almost uh, i think oh, at least from my customers, uh, all of them moved to GKE. So what happens next? Of course, it's Google Kubernetes engine, and uh, basically uh, there, uh, there are similar services uh, on any, I think, public cloud platform. Uh, so Google Kubernetes engine, it's a managed service, and uh, in case of Google Kubernetes engine, uh, we as a Google uh, take care about your control plane, uh, about updating uh, your nodes, uh, and uh, we can help you to make some auto-scaling, auto-provisioning, etc. Et uh, but again, it's a quite common approach and you can meet this approach uh, in any public cloud provider. Uh, you still have to work uh, in your own uh, with networking with security uh, you uh, still have to control after uh, after scaling and uh, such kind of tasks uh, and speaking about gke autopilot uh, we introduced basically next level of uh, managing gke clusters uh, managing kubernetes clusters for you so in such case we're covering also 
uh, questions of uh, up to scaling fully on our side and of course we're covering networking load balancing and all this stuff on top of uh, by our SREs so why it's so important at least from my point of view Okay, uh, yeah, uh, one more thing. Uh, GKE Autopilot, it's uh, one of the way. So uh, you still can work uh, like a, with a traditional approach uh, with GKE standard mode. And GKE Autopilot, it's another way how to uh, work with your Kubernetes clusters. And uh, we are not going to uh, sunset uh, GKE uh, uh, standard deployments. Uh, it's uh, just when you are creating new cluster, you have two options, how you uh, how you want to work with. So, so what advantages uh, you can have uh, from the from Google uh, GKE Autopilot? Uh, so, first of all, it's optimized for production. What does it mean? In GKE Autopilot, uh, basically GKE Autopilot is managing by our uh, SREs and uh, you uh, it managing by implementing on all hardening guides, all best practices. Uh, it's of course tested, tested as, as a, in a Google environment internal as well as uh, external uh, Kubernetes deployments of our uh, customers. Of course, it's uh, you do, don't have to control amount of resources which we which you need. Uh, so no, not after uh, not provisioning, not after scalers, and all this on all this stuff. Third, it's of course uh, it will be quite useful for people who is new in uh, in Kubernetes and in GKE because it solves uh, many tasks which uh, in other case you have to solve by your own so it's speaking about production of course it's reduced uh, day to operations so monitoring of course uh, will be accessible for you so you always can uh, check what is going on in your cluster and how it works and all this stuff Updates. Basically, we do, uh, we do some updates. Uh, most uh, most of, of uh, updates in GKE standard, but of course in uh, GKE after scaler. Uh, sorry, after pilot, uh, we do all of the updates of Kubernetes cluster as well as uh, maybe Istio or something, uh, some additional services. Of course, uh, again, all resources automatically provisioned. So uh, you, again, don't have to work with uh, resource planning and all this kind of tasks. Efficiency. Uh, it's a very interesting uh, thing, which I want to stop a little bit more. First of all, of course, all after scaling, which is uh, available uh, in GKE, is available for uh, GKE after pilot. Uh, and you don't have to control it. So it will be done uh, by our engineers on behalf of you. And it's a very important point. Uh, often uh, when we're speaking about after scaling, implementing some or other after scaling practices or uh, some uh, or other after scaling architectures, uh, it's always uh, some, uh, some somewhere between efficiency of after scaling and cost wise so uh, you always you cannot uh, make after scaling for thousands of nodes uh, if you have a cluster of 10 or 50 of nodes uh, because it can be done but it would uh, it will be it will cost a lot to be honest uh, and which is very important in uh, after scale uh, in gke after pilot uh, we introduce it new, uh, introducing new pricing model. So usual approach how it works in GKE standard and how it works uh, in uh, other uh, uh, managed services. Uh, you pay for nodes. In GKE after pilot, you will pay for pods. So only for uh, resources which are uh, consumed by pods. So uh, even if 
GKE Autopilot will create 1,000 nodes for you, uh, you will still pay it only for such amount of nodes, which is actually required for your, uh, for your deployment and for your workload. Uh, what services uh, and what kind of services uh, GKE Autopilot currently support? Basically, all of them. So you can uh, make deployments, stateful set, daemon set, jobs. So all of this is supported by GKE Autopilot. Uh, or, uh, of course, uh, you can also use uh, Helm charts to automatize uh, this provisioning. But uh, there is some there are some uh, drawbacks uh, most of these drawbacks uh, is uh, because uh, just of some best practices or just some hardening guides and uh, about uh, it's about our ability to provide to you service so for instance uh, you will uh, not be able to edit K, uh, kubernetes uh, not objects so it's fully on our side and it fully control it uh, on our side. You will not have a, a SSH access to your nodes. So such kind of restriction are in place. And yes, uh, if you're okay with uh, this restriction, you can uh, go with GKE after pilot. If uh, you have some fine tuning of your uh, Kubernetes, probably after pilot is uh, not uh, best uh, way to implement for you. And uh, I mentioned already about new pricing detail, uh, pricing uh, structure. So when you're paying only for uh, pods, not for nodes. And second, uh, with GKE after pilot, we're introducing new SLA model. So again, usually uh, SLA provided, uh, SLOs uh, provided for control play uh, for availability of control play so basically it's main slo and and uh, subject of sla for managed uh, gke services in case of uh, gke after pilot you will have sla at pod level so uh, we can provide uh, to you at the moment 99.9 uh, .9 sla for pod level so we can uh, as you, uh, we can uh, ensure you that pod, in case of uh, regional deployment, uh, will be available uh, not less than 99.9%. Per, uh, so, uh, to make some small uh, summarize, so from my perspective, it's uh, very important for first of all for people who are quite new in kubernetes and for company uh, which do not have uh, very experienced devops uh, devops engineers or sres and of course uh, it uh, may may be uh, useful for companies which have uh, some kind of uh, requirements uh, to follow best practices uh, or companies which uh, have to restrictions with the amount of workforce which uh, they can uh, use uh, with uh, operating GKE or operating Kubernetes or basically all IIT infrastructure. So it uh, allows uh, you to use uh, Kubernetes and deploy on top of Kubernetes uh, much more easily. Of course, it's also maybe valuable uh, for development companies uh, which uh, where developers uh, want to work with code. It's obvious goal uh, of any developer and uh, don't actually work a lot with uh, like object inside Kubernetes, uh, I don't know, uh, setting up networking and all this kind of stuff. So in case of GKI Autopilot, uh, you just can work at container level. Yes, you still have to make a manifest YAML files, uh, but it's much more easier than in case of GKE standard mode. But of course, with, uh, it, co it comes with some price, so there, is some restrict there are some restrictions. Uh, so, yeah. My next point, it's not actually uh, related to cloud native uh, application, but never, nevertheless, 
uh, we in Google can see that uh, Kubernetes become using by uh, big uh, traditional enterprises. Such kind of companies uh, have, a, uh, have a lot of, basically have a lot of uh, legacy code. And of course it monoliths, it uh, some kind of stateful workloads like databases, file system, etc. And uh, that's why in, I think two weeks ago uh, we announced uh, function, backup functionality for GKE. So now you can easily, if you need or if you want, uh, to uh, backup uh, objects inside of Kubernetes and, of, of course, making some time schedules, uh, make some plans, etc., etc., directly from a GKE user interface. Next. Uh, again, to be honest, uh, I didn't meet a lot of customers who are using uh, Windows containers, but I'm pretty sure that such customers uh, exist. And if uh, somebody of you are using uh, Windows containers, you again can share this uh, with me or with colleagues uh, in Slack chat. But again, just a reminder that uh, I think already more than a year, uh, you can run Windows containers uh, together with uh, just regular Linux containers in GKE environments. After scaling. So generally, generally speaking, in GKE, uh, you have uh, I think four options to uh, scale your workloads. So of course, a regular pod uh, after scaling, horizontal pod after scaling, well, uh, where you increase the number of uh, pods uh, inside your deployment. Uh, not after provisioning and uh, not after scaling, it's related to increasing a number of uh, not, uh, GKE nodes for your workloads. And which is also maybe sometimes interesting, uh, it's a vertical pot of the scaling. So basically, uh, you also have an ability to uh, increase size of uh, your pods. So basically, limits uh, increase uh, limits of your pods and uh, make these pods uh, big, uh, bigger and um, bigger. Basically, it's. Uh, Again, it's uh, mostly usable for stateful sets because uh, for a stateless set, I think a horizontal port after scanner works better, but nevertheless, uh, you can use it for such kind of tasks. Uh, 15,000 uh, nodes in GKE, mm, to be honest, I know only a couple of companies which is uh, required such amount of nodes, so just how big we can be. Next option, uh, usage metering. Uh, again, in case if you miss it, uh, because uh, I think it was introduced a year ago. Uh, usage, uh, maybe s somebody of you are aware that in GCP, uh, you can export all your billing related information into BigQuery and makes some kind of uh, custom dashboards, uh, make some analysis, etc., etc. Uh, before usage metering, uh, in such reports, uh, you was able to see only like GKE cluster or GKE node object, and uh, you can no, uh, you wasn't able to just split between the uh, between teams or split between departments and etc. etc. Uh, with usage metering, uh, now you can do that. So basically, usage metering uh, allows you to export billing, uh, basically resource-related and billing-related information inside uh, of your Kubernetes cluster, GKE cluster. So basically, you will uh, be able to split informa billing information about your resources uh, by, for instance, namespaces, by some labels, uh, by maybe that maybe networking uh, some uh, some networks or something like that so mostly it's namespaces and labels uh, which is more uh, more widely using use it and uh, i've helped uh, help the customer to make such kind of reporting so 
this is mostly about uh, GKE and yeah, GKE in Google Cloud. Next, let's go to serverless. Again, uh, Cloud Run is a service uh, which exists, I think, more than two years already. Uh, but uh, again, in our region, uh, not so many people as wanted uh, aware about such kind of service. So what basically Cloud Run is? Cloud Run is a serverless service which allows you to deploy your containers. That's all. So uh, it will it uh, it will allow you to deploy containers and uh, it supports interaction with Cloud Run services uh, due to uh, with help of HTTP, HTTPS, gRPC protocols uh, and uh, WebSockets also supported. So containers, any containers, so it means any language, any library and all such of this stuff. Uh, again, cloud, so basically all my presentation today is uh, about maturity of uh, Google services, which is related to Kubernetes. Again, Cloud Run uh, was introduced a couple of years, uh, as I said, uh, three years or two years uh, ago. And since then, uh, we have a lot of improvements. So again, Cloud Run uh, can be triggered from other GCP services. So uh, it may work similar like, like, cloud, uh, like our cloud functions. Uh, it uh, also, initially, it was supposed uh, for like short-term uh, tasks, which just run once and uh, finish. Uh, now uh, we can support long-run instances. Of course, we add uh, a lot of security features and uh, a lot of security connection, uh, security interaction between uh, other our services. Uh, WebSocket, uh, it's also something which was introduced quite some, uh, quite some time ago. And one of questions uh, which uh, brought up uh, quite often, uh, back in a couple of years ago, is that initially Cloud Run uh, wasn't able uh, to set up a default amount of containers. So when you implement containers, initial, uh, initial amount of containers were, uh, was like zero. Uh, it works for, server, uh, for many workloads, but for some uh, workloads, it provides uh, some kind of lag, uh, lag uh, with regards to which calls cold start. So you have to spend some time, so you have to wait while first container will run. Uh, now this problem is solved uh, and uh, you basically can uh, set amount of uh, containers which will exist for uh, all time of, wo uh, of working cloud run. So, uh, we implemented some kind of warm, uh, warm start, let's put it in that way. Next, uh, which is very important for Cloud Run. Uh, Cloud Run uh, has a couple of uh, options for deployment. I will uh, talk about it a little bit uh, later. Uh, but uh, in Cloud Run, in fully managed version of Cloud Run, uh, your resources are built by uh, built uh, per uh, 100 milliseconds. So most of uh, GCP and not only GCP services are built per second or sometimes even per minute. In the case of Cloud Run, it's 100 milliseconds. Moreover, uh, when a container starts, so instance uh, of container in Cloud Run starts, it's not counting as a billing time, billable time. Uh, billing starts only when first requests come into container. And in the in same manner, only when last requests, uh, when last requests sent to container, at that time billing will stop. Uh, that's why uh, this uh, 100 milliseconds chunk is uh, very important, uh, important because it will allow, it allows you to 
basically save some amount of money on con uh, on container start and container stop procedure procedures. Uh, Cloud Run itself, uh, it's it's a good thing, uh, but uh, it uh, was like for solving uh, some kind of small tasks, uh, small autonomous tasks. Uh, and uh, we want to increase uh, options to use Cloud Run. Uh, that's why uh, we introduced Cloud Workflows. Cloud, uh, cloud Workflows uh, basically help uh, helps you to build in a like UI manner uh, some kind of graphs or pipelines of uh, of uh, different cloud run tasks. So you can make some uh, looping. You can make some uh, if then states, etc., uh, etc. Et in Cloud Workflow and each stage of Cloud Workflows is basically cloud run task. Uh, if somebody of you uh, aware about Kubeflow, it's a, another project uh, which based on top of Kubernetes uh, with regards to AI and ML, uh, Kubeflow works in quite same manner. So each step is container. In case of cloud, uh, cloud workflow, each step is container implemented in cloud. And third part of my presentation is, of course, Antos. For people who may be uh, not aware uh, about Antos, Antos is a, a Google Cloud platform, uh, which again initially was introduced uh, in 2019. And uh, Antos as a platform allows you to run your code, so uh, to run basically your containers uh, everywhere. So speaking about everywhere, it's in GKE, in Google Cloud, in another in other cloud providers, and also uh, in in your on-premise environments. And Antos provides to you like a single plane of glass and single plane of control of all these services. So all services uh, which is connected to Antos are controlled uh, by Antos and deployed in the same, same way. Uh, Initially, two years ago, uh, Antos uh, for on-premise environments uh, was uh, introduced only on top of uh, VMware virtual machines. So uh, you have to have uh, VMware infrastructure on your on-premise, and Antos uh, sits on top of this infrastructure. Uh, last year, uh, we introduced also Antos on bare metal. So basically, uh, now to deploying GKE on-prem service, uh, GKE on-prem, uh, you can uh, use basically any uh, hardware, physical hardware, and uh, just a Linux on top of this hardware, and Antos will control and support Kubernetes on top of this hardware. Uh, also, uh, there was quite uncertainty uh, about what is Antos on AWS, and on Azure, as you can see, it's still in preview, but nevertheless, and attached clusters. So uh, let me describe this. Antos on AWS, like Antos on Azure. It's a way of deploying Antos when in, for instance, AWS, uh, regular virtual machines, regular load balancers, and uh, storages are used. So basically, and Antos on AWS will work on top of EC2, ELB, and uh, such kind of services. If you want uh, to attach to Antos uh, managed, uh, managed service of uh, AWS or Azure, or basically any Kubernetes cluster, uh, which also can be installed on on premise or anywhere. Uh, then uh, you will use uh, you can use attached clusters. Uh, yes, in case of attached clusters, there uh, there are some restrictions because uh, of course Google is not controlling uh, management control plane of other cloud providers. So uh, 
we are not providing updates, maintenance, and uh, such kind of tasks uh, for attached cluster. But other uh, services uh, like configuration, like policy management, like networking management uh, and service mesh operation and security, we do provide for attached clusters. So uh, again, uh, you can, you feel free to choose what option actually uh, works for you. Let's uh, go to a couple of other subservices. First of all, uh, one of them, one of them is Antos Config Management. So basically, Antos Config Management allows you to implement uh, GitOps approach on managing your Antos configuration. So basically, all objects inside Antos, so GKE clusters, GKE cluster, GKE on-prem clusters, clusters, uh, GKE clusters, Kubernetes clusters on other clouds, uh, etc., are configured by just a manifest uh, which uh, stored in different in uh, git repository so it can be uh, google cloud uh, cloud google cloud repository it can be github it can be on-premise git repository doesn't matter so uh, antos config manager allows you to use uh, this manifest to implement your cluster it's a one part of uh, antos config management Second part, it's a policy controller. So policy controller is a main uh, purpose of uh, policy controller uh, is provide a secure, secure environment. So policy con uh, controller is more for security teams. What actually a policy controller uh, does? Policy controller in the same way, uh, manner uh, as a whole config management so in git uh, you can put yaml files uh, which represents rules on which your infrastructure or basically your application can be deployed what i mean uh, when somebody trying to deploy for instance deployment of your some internal systems uh, you can restrict deploy this deployment outside of outside of your gke on-prem environment or some particular cluster or maybe somebody trying to uh, um, deploy an application without uh, without i don't know authorization of the authentication uh, for service mesh or maybe without encryption so all of this uh, are, uh, can be Describe it in this docs for a policy controller, and policy controller will check uh, all your infrastructure, infrastructure, how it works, and if it's really uh, consistent, uh, if it's really compliance with this rule uh, which you added. Very important uh, thing, uh, thing about uh, Antos Config Manager and Antos Service Mesh, which I'm going to talk a little bit, a bit later. Uh, both Antos Config Manager and Antos Service Mesh now um, available for GKE users. So initially, uh, ACM and ASM was available only for Antos user, and if you want, uh, if you wanted to use uh, some of this, uh, you have to pay for Antos. Now it's available for GKE with some additional fee, uh, but you can uh, use it separately. Uh, next, uh, of course, Zero Trust Networking Antos Service Mesh. Uh, from my again observation, uh, Istio and Service Mesh are quite uh, wide known in our region, so I'm not going to uh, stop a lot on uh, Service Mesh. So basically, uh, at the Service Mesh, it's a Google managed imp uh, implementation of Istio with monitoring, observability, all settings, traffic, routing, etc., etc. So basically, you can think about Antos Service Mesh as a managed version of uh, Istio. 
again, now is available also for GKE as a separate product. As I mentioned before, Cloud Run uh, can work in a couple of environments. So the first option is run Cloud Run serverless. serverless. Uh, basically on top of Google Cloud infrastructure uh, with all this billing and uh, such kind of uh, stuff. Uh, second option, of course, you can run Cloud Run on top of Antos with uh, no additional charge uh, because Cloud Run it's a, again, managed service for open source key native service. So you can implement by yourself uh, if you want. And third option, Cloud Run can be deployed on top of your GKE cluster. So to work uh, together with some internal services or internal application or internal deployments. Uh, migration. It's again service which was introduced uh, together with Antos, and basically it allows you uh, move your virtual machine from uh, your virtual infrastructure to Kubernetes. So it's not a silver bullet. It's just a solution which allows you easily to create stateful set from out of from your uh, virtual machine. So. It may uh, be useful sometimes, uh, but uh, you should not uh, expect uh, magic from this service. And two words about pricing. So as I mentioned, uh, we have basically now uh, also stabilized uh, pricing for Antos. So now you have two options, Antos on-prem uh, on one price and Antos in cloud, so on GKE or in other clouds at another price. And uh, which is very important, uh, speaking about on-prem, so bare metal and Visphere, uh, both of these kind of deployments uh, has, have this basically same price, like and uh, like an Antos in the clouds. And yes, it was a low word this year, I think. Uh, last thing which I want to share, again, it's about maturity. Uh, we introduced some kind of batch uh, works with Antos. So uh, if you want uh, to buy hardware for your on-premise environment and you are planning to uh, deploy Antos on top of it, uh, you can reach to basically a lot of vendors, which you can see uh, here and uh, check about this page. So this page just means that uh, this hardware was tested with Antos and it worked basically with Antos. Yeah. Unfortunately, I can not share today a lot of uh, really bleeding edge updates. Uh, and uh, the reason uh, for this is uh, because uh, we have a Google Cloud Next uh, conference in a couple of weeks. So usually before uh, this conference, uh, we are in some kind uh, of silent period uh, and uh, most of uh, most important announces uh, will be there. So if you are interested, you can also participate in this conference. Uh, it's a free conference, but it's whole week conference. With that, I want to thank all of you and uh, probably uh, I want to just quickly summarize all of this. Uh, so first of all, when we are speaking about cloud native application, we're speaking uh, in case of GCP, uh, we are always speaking about Kubernetes. So Cloud Run is uh, built on top of Kubernetes, Antos built on top of Kubernetes, uh, GKE obviously built on top of Kubernetes. So all of this is mostly about Kubernetes story. Antos is a product uh, basically for large deployments, to be honest. So if you need some hybrid or multi-cloud deployment, uh, you can try to look and uh, test Antos. In many cases, especially in our region, Antos is quite 
overwhelming, uh, basically. Uh, so, so you can just use uh, GK environments and uh, it will be enough for you. And Cloud Run is for some kind of steps or small, small tasks or small uh, workflows. Uh, again, uh, if you want and uh, you can implement it on top of Kubernetes of your GKE cluster and connect it to your like biggest applica bigger application and bigger services and it can work together. Yeah, uh, with all of that, uh, thank you. And uh, of course, if you have any questions, uh, please reach out to me uh, in Slack chat. Uh, and if you want, uh, don't hesitate to reach out directly, or if you have some like sensitive question, don't hesitate to reach out to me directly.